special boys and girls on fire. It's been a great year from January to December. Woohoo! We have so much to be thankful for. I don't know about you. If you know you are indeed grateful for a beautiful year, would you get up with me and say this? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Great job, guys. It's the month of December and we get to celebrate someone really special. He is special to God and he's special to each and every one of us. Do you know who that is? Did someone say Jesus? Yes! Jesus! Even though we get to celebrate him all the time, but in this month of December, we get to celebrate him extra special because it's his birth month and that we're celebrating the love that God has for each and every one of us. Today, I am so excited to announce to you that we're going to start the Christmas story. Trust me, this is going to be a beautiful one because it's going to be an unforgettable Christmas experience. Are you as excited as I am to learn about this unforgettable Christmas experience? If you know you are excited, can you stand up and do your happy dance for me? Can you see Mrs. Adidas' happy dance? Yeah! Before Jesus was given birth to, there were a series of events that took place. Today, we'll be focusing on one of them, which is the promise. Yes! God gave the children of Israel a promise long before the birth of Jesus. Do you know what that promise is? Do you even know what the promise is? Do you know how long it took before this promise was fulfilled? Before the promise was fulfilled, how did the people behave? Were they excited? Were they grumpy? I know you want to know about all this and much more. But before we go on, can you stand on your feet? Let us praise this promise-keeping God together.
his peace in Christ When we learn of him Feel the love he felt for us When he bore our sins Listen to his words Let them come alive If we know him as he is There is peace in Christ He gives us hope Hallelujah. I am 
I am confident. I am wise. I am successful. I am blessed. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am knowledgeable. I am influential. I understand. I am intelligent. I am above and never beneath. My royalties, I am super excited today. Do you want to know why? Because it's the season to be merry. Christmas is one of my best seasons of the year. During this season, you get loads of promises from your mommies, daddies, uncles, aunties, and even your friends. They promise you gifts, drinks, food, and lots of goodies, right? I thought so too. You know, people make promises every day. Sometimes we can give something to another person as a sign of a promise. Sometimes we may sign our names to seal that promise. And other times we just give our word as a bond. Take a look at what I have in my hand. I am sure you've seen this before. When a woman and a man gets married, they say things like, I promise to love you in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, as long as we both shall live. Then they go ahead and exchange this ring as a symbol of that promise. That is why you see a married man and woman putting the ring on their foot finger. Just like this. It means that they are committed to keep this promise to each other every single day. I also have here with me a checkbook. Many adults use a checkbook to pay people an amount of money. They instruct the bank to pay a specific amount of money to the name of the person written in the check. This makes it a binding document. And a binding document requires a signature. When you sign on a check, you are promising that you will pay an amount of money to the name of the person written in that check. Your signature is your promise. Taking a look at the wedding ring and the checkbook should inspire you on how promises work. People make promises every day, but do they keep their promises? Hmm. Sadly, no. But God makes promises. Does he keep those promises? Yes, he does. As long as he says it and you find it in the Bible, you can always count on it. No shaking. God never fails. Today, we will learn about the promise that God made to the people of Israel. What exactly is this promise? Did they believe in this promise? Come on, let's learn about this promise together. Are you wondering what this promise is and why it is so important to God that you know about this? I know that God sent the promise to a prophet. And guess what? We are about to find out who the prophet is 
and exactly what the special promise is. Are you ready to find out with me? Are you ready? Now repeat after me. For unto us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulder and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Yay! That is the promise. And God sent the prophet Isaiah to deliver this message. And this is going to be our memory verse. This was a verse affirming the promise of the Messiah to save and redeem the world. Now, are you ready to learn your memory verse with me? Are you ready? I get to do it first and then you can say it after me. Are you ready? Don't forget your hand motion. For unto us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Are you ready to do that with me? Are you ready? Okay, let's do it again. For unto us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Now let's do it one last time. Are you ready? Are you ready, my boys and girls on fire? Okay now. For unto us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Since we are learning about promises this week, I want you to make me a promise that you will practice your memory verse using your hand motion. Would you promise me that? All right, guys. See you next week. Bye. My special boys and girls on fire, it's Bible reading time again. Are you excited? Awesome. It's taken from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament just before the book of Jeremiah and right after the book of Songs of Solomon. Isaiah is one of the major prophets in the Bible. Prophets are messengers of God. God sends messages to his people through the prophets. We get to read our memory verse again and another verse. Our memory verse is from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. Let's open our Bible together. It's a very great promise. Are you ready? Let's read out loud together. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. And he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. There will be no limit to how great his authority is. The peace he brings will never end. He will rule on David's throne and over his kingdom. He will make the kingdom strong and secure. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure it that happens. He rules over all. God's original plan was for us to be with him in the Garden of Eden. But the sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden caused a separation between us and God. 
So God needed a plan to reconcile us back to him. As you can see from our Bible reading, the birth of Jesus was prophesied long before Jesus was even born. So what is a prophecy? A prophecy is when God makes a promise and tells us about something that will happen in the future. Most of the prophecies were to encourage the people and to let the people know that they are not forgotten. So they always looked forward to hearing from the prophets because back then, the prophets always sent messages to the people from God. The promise about the birth of Jesus was something the all of Israel looked forward to because the prophet Isaiah described him as the Messiah, the Savior, as someone that will bring us closer to God, as someone that will bring good news to the poor, and as someone that will rule in the new kingdom where there is no pain, no suffering, no sadness. Hallelujah! Everyone was expectant. They wanted to meet this Messiah. They wanted him to come and save them. But they knew it was going to come from the family of David. They knew it was going to come from a region of Galilee. They knew it was going to be born as a baby. But how would all of this happen? So they hoped and waited and waited. And do you know what? This promise was fulfilled, but it took 700 years of wait before this promise was fulfilled. But you know today, the Bible is full of so many promises. So when you even come across unpleasant situations or things don't go the way you plan, there's a promise for you in the Bible. Even when things don't make sense or don't go according to your will, God always has a plan. It is never too late or never too early. His timing is always perfect. So now, my question for you is, how much do you trust God? When things don't go the way you plan, or things does not even make sense, do you cry? Do you throw tantrums? Do you react? Or are you joyful, knowing fully well that God's plan is perfect? And at the right time, his promises will be fulfilled. Yes, God's plan is perfect. And that is why he sent Jesus to save you and I. It was all part of his perfect plan, his rescue plan. After the sin, that was the only plan God had to reconcile us back to him to deliver us from sin and from the devil's evil plan. So he had to send his son, Jesus, to save us. Yes, Jesus came to save us. I'm grateful for God's rescue plan. If not, who knows what would have happened to us all? Are you grateful for God's rescue plan? Now, we necessarily don't have to wait for the prophet to hear from God. We can always find our way back to God through the love of Jesus. So, what is that promise that God has given you? What is that word that God has said concerning you? Keep trusting Him. Don't lose hope. Study the Bible. Spend time with Him. And watch the way your life will transform and make a huge difference. If God can send His Son, Jesus, to save you and I, then His promises a yay and amen. They are 100% legit and they will surely be fulfilled at the perfect time. Hallelujah! What does God's promise say about it? What does God's promise say about that thing? Hmm, hold that thought. You see, children, I have a sealed envelope right here in front of me. But you will not believe what is written on this envelope. Right, Jesse? All right? It says, enjoy the treat. Now, are you wondering what is in this envelope? In fact, I'm preparing to have my dessert. And I'm wondering, what do I want to have for my dessert? Hmm. Chocolate. Ice cream, cake, 
Can anyone tell me what is in this envelope? Anyone? Mm, I know what you're thinking. That's impossible. So why don't we just open the envelope together? So, to find out what is inside it. I'm very curious, but we will soon find out. Wow! Wow! <laughs> um, I think uh, class is over for now. You all can go to sleep. Mm? This is delicious. I mean, very, very delicious. Food for thought. Is this not exactly how we treat the Bible? I know what you're thinking. What does the Bible have to do with an envelope full of goodies? God has promised us a lot of things. A whole lot. In fact, there's a book filled with his promises for our lives. You don't have to doubt it or ignore it. But it is incredibly important for you to open the book, read the Bible, know his promises regarding your life. Know what God says about that particular situation. There's a whole lot in his book for us. Why don't we do a quick exercise? A very quick one. Now think about that particular thing that keeps you up at night. That situation that, that you're so worried about, that makes you so anxious, that gets you so anxious. Think about it. Anything. That situation, that thing that when you hear of or when you see, you shake. Now write down three of those things. Just three of them. Yes.
right, do you have a list of those three things now? Do you have them written down? Now, I have a question for you. What does God's promise say about those things? Do you know what God says about those situations? Do you? Now, that is the research. This week, I need you to open the Bible, open the Word of God, and find out what God says about those things. Research, find out what He says about those situations, those things that, that scare you. I know, I know, research is it's a lot of work, but yes, Guess what? You can ask daddy, ask mommy, ask your uncle to help you search online. It is important for you to open the Bible this week and find out what, what the word of God says about those situations, those, those, those things you've written down. How can you stand on the promises of God that you know nothing about? So children, my boys and girls, read the Bible. Read the word of God this week. Promise me you will do that. And find out what God's promises say about those things. Promise? Great job. It's a deal then. My boys and girls on fire, I look forward to hearing about God's promises that you were able to find. Have a good day.